Not all films in a franchise are created equal, and some are just plain bad. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 worst movies within its own franchise. City. Uh huh. Can you take us there? Uh, on second thought? No. Not really, no. 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 It's embarrassing. But, uh, my friend might have been banished. For this list, we're looking at the weakest entries in movie franchises that have at least three films. Let's roll. If you like what you're hearing, be sure to check out the full song at the link below. Number 10, A Good Day to Die Hard. One of the most memorable action franchises of all time, the Die Hard films were all critically and commercially successful. Welcome to the party, pal! That is, until this one. Guess who? By far the worst reviewed movie of the franchise, A Good Day to Die Hard was panned by critics who focused especially on the weak plot and implausibility of the action sequences. The biggest complaints, however, were directed at the weak characterization of John McClane, particularly when compared to the other films in the franchise. Do you think I understand a word you're saying? Fans were especially left groaning at the weak use of his famous catchphrase. The shit we do for our kids. Yippee mother Number 9. Superman 4. The Quest for Peace. Yeah! I would go bananas in a week! Oh, uh, can I uh, take you to the airport? Not unless you can fly. Although somewhat overlooked in the modern era of superhero movies, the first two films in this franchise were both a huge critical and commercial success. The third film took a bit of a step back, but nothing quite like this. Widely considered to be one of the worst movies ever made of any genre, both critics and viewers hammered the film for its boring action and terrible special effects. Christopher Reeve later stated that he wished he had never been involved with the film, and fans wouldn't get to see another Superman movie for nearly 20 years. Is the world gonna be vaporized? No, Luther. It's as it always was, on the brink, with good fighting evil. See you in 20. Number 8. Star Trek V – The Final Frontier this is the only film in the franchise to be directed by William Shatner, which, for the sake of Star Trek fans everywhere, is a huge break, because it is a disaster. I've done far worse than kill you. I've hurt you. And I wish to go on hurting you. The film was intended to be a farewell to the original crew of the Enterprise, but instead was nearly a farewell to the entire franchise. Critics disliked the nonsensical plot and the poorly directed action sequences, with many pointing the finger at Shatner. Why is God angry? Why? Why have you done this to my friend? He doubts me. You have not answered his question. What does God need with a starship? Luckily, another sequel was released a few years later to give the original crew a far better ending. You call this relaxing? I'm a nervous wreck. Number 7. Home Alone 3 The first Home Alone was a huge success and is now considered to be a classic Christmas film. Everyone in this family hates me. Then maybe you should ask Santa for a new family. I don't want a new family. I don't want any family. Families suck. Remarkably, the sequel, which had a very similar plot, has also become a cult classic over the years. Home Alone 3 decided to introduce a new cast of characters. They got the tape. Why'd they still chase the toy car? Instead of Macaulay Culkin's adorable Kevin, we get a new lead in Alex. And instead of Joe Pesci's memorable Harry, we get four forgettable villains. <laughs> Even a screenplay by John Hughes couldn't save this film. The last in the franchise to receive a theatrical release. Number 6. Spider-Man 3 All Sam Raimi had to do was stick the landing and he may have given us one of the greatest film trilogies of all time. Woo! 
Instead, we have two classic superhero movies and an average one at best. Overstuffed with underdeveloped villains and too many plot lines, the film failed to capture the essence of the first two and made things needlessly complicated. I had no choice. We always have a choice. In fact, Raimi has even stated that he considers the film to be terrible. As a result, emo Peter Parker and his dancing shoes would be rebooted a few years later. Number 5. X-Men Origins – Wolverine God, you ever shut up, pal? No, not when I'm awake. Although X-Men The Last Stand has its fair share of critics, it capped off a successful trilogy that paved the way for comic book films to come. Unfortunately, it also set up this mess. I think you confused me with someone who gives a shit. Granted, it's, it's probably not as intimidating as having a gun or bone claws or the fingernails of a bag lady. The film does no favors to Wolverine, giving him a generic origin story and awful CGI claws. The worst decision, however, was turning Deadpool into a mute computer-programmed weapon. Wait, is that you? Stryker finally figured out how to shut you up. Seriously, this film had Ryan Reynolds as Deadpool, and we've all seen how successful that can be, and gives us this. Number 4. Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull Indiana Jones and Aliens? Sounds awesome, right? Wrong. This ain't gonna be easy. Not as easy as it used to be. Well, we've been through worse. Yeah, when? Initially, this film received relatively positive reviews from critics, but time has not been nice to the fourth installment of the Indiana Jones franchise. A franchise that was perhaps best known for its practical special effects and great storytelling, this film featured ridiculous scenes like Shia LaBeouf swinging on vines with monkeys and Harrison Ford surviving a nuclear blast by hiding in a fridge. A Razzie Award for Worst Sequel only confirms the poor quality of this film. No more. Forever waiting. Soon now. Number 3. The Godfather Part 3. I know it was you, Fredo. You broke my heart. You broke my heart. The first two Godfather films set such a high standard in regard to storytelling, character development, and filmmaking that they ultimately doomed this film. The fact that it was released 16 years after the second didn't help in that regard. Just when I thought I was out, they pulled me back in. While the story is by no means terrible, the acting could have used some work. Reviewers were especially critical of Sofia Coppola's performance as Mary Corleone, with some calling it a fatal flaw that ultimately ruined the film. I love my family. Even your cousin Vince. I really love him. He's your first cousin. Then I love him first. Number 2. Star Wars Episode 1 – The Phantom Menace One of the most beloved franchises in pop culture history, to say fans had high hopes for this film, released 16 years after The Return of the Jedi, is a massive understatement. You were right about one thing, Master. The negotiations were short. However, we are willing to bet that fans didn't predict the film would focus on galactic trade disputes. Add in stiff acting, terrible dialogue, and a completely unnecessary explanation for how the Force works, and it's pretty easy to see why this film failed to capture the magic of the original trilogy. There is something else behind all this, Your Highness. There's no logic in the Federation's move here. My feelings tell me they will destroy you. Of course, none of this was improved in the sequel, as Attack of the Clones was equally as bad. He can't do that! Shoot her! Or something. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are a few honorable mentions that remind us that sometimes it's better to quit when you're ahead. A view to a kill. I'm afraid I wasn't much help. Don't worry, it's all wrapped up. Blade Trinity. You're tasting a little bland, lover. Are you getting enough fatty acids in your diet? Have you tried lake trout? Mackerel. Rocky Five. If he wasn't here. I probably wouldn't be alive today. The fact that you're here and doing as well as you're doing gives me, what do you call it, a motivation? Terminator Genesis. You can't run from me, I'll always find you. John, fight this, it doesn't have to go down this way. There's a momentum to time, Kyle. 
things that want to happen. Like I always survive, and you always die. The Cloverfield Paradox. Yes. I can't find anything. You must have gotten turned around and moved during firing. Well, it's big, blue, full of angry people. Keep looking, you'll find it. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Batman and Robin Another franchise killer to make our list, this movie is considered by many to be one of the worst movies ever made. Genius! Behold! The ideal killing machine! I call this little number... Bane. Of, humanity. of course, if you've watched any of our other lists involving some sort of ranking of the worst movies, you already know that. From bat suits with nipples and cod pieces to a Batman Visa card, to more puns than you could possibly imagine fitting into one script, this movie did what the Joker never could, kill Batman. Well, I'm totally over, all right? Positively. Me too, definitely. Great stems, though. Buds, too. Yeah, those are nice. That is, until he was revived by Christopher Nolan nearly a decade later. How do you know my name? The world is too small for someone like Bruce Wayne to disappear, no matter how deep he chooses to sink. Do you agree with our picks? Let us know in the comments. And hey, if you're a fan of the song playing right now, be sure to check out the music video for it right here.